Hi hey folks, Simon here, welcome back to the channel. And I am just back from my holiday, which I went on with the family. We had a great time, we went to the New Forest, which is a national park in the southern parts of England in Hampshire. I've never been to the New Forest before, so I didn't know what to expect, but we had a great time. It really was wonderful. There are some lovely sights and views, and there's a lot of wildlife and wild horses and just all sorts down there. And I would recommend it to you guys if you find yourself somewhere within the vicinity of the south of England to pay a visit, even if it's just for the day. As long as you've got a good day, you know, with the weather, and, and we were blessed with the weather, so I'm grateful for that, then you will have a lovely time. And I did visit the Isle of Wight, since it was fairly close by, for the one day as well, and that was awesome. We went to the Needles, and if you do find yourself around there, I would recommend the cable car ride down the cliff. That's an experience, I will say that, a, a very good experience. And for those of you that were wondering, when I shared a photo on the community tab, that was where that came from, the needles at the Isle of Wight. So not Land's End, as many of you said, but I can see why you would say that. Very similar, but still a very different location. So that's the update. I'm glad to be back now. And I am a little bit tired. We did do a lot of bike riding, a lot of walking every day. So if I fall asleep midway through the episode, you'll have to forgive me for that. But hopefully that won't happen. And... Just as we get started, as always, a big thank you to everybody who's been watching these videos, subscribing, liking, supporting the channel, all of that stuff just means a lot to me. So here we are then at the Burned Out Hermit's Hideout. We're going to head inside here. We're going to be doing some optional stuff. This isn't optional, but we are going to be doing some optional stuff after this today before moving on with the main story itself. And the first thing we're going to do is head over to where this little bit of dialogue comes up and we can use the Ice Breath, an item which we collected previously a number of episodes uh, ago. Now this is optional, okay? But it is a prerequisite to unlocking another party member a little bit later on down the road. So if you've got the Ice Breath and if you're following along with me, you certainly should, then just make sure you use that here before moving on. And with that done, we're going to move further, further deeper into the uh, the hermit's hideout, or what's left of it, I should say. Now, here we're going to get a bit of a cutscene. And this is where we should get another party member join us eventually. Okay, I'm just going to chat to, if I can get up the stairs here, to Riddell over here. And finally, once we've done this, she should join us. We've been speaking to her and seeing her for many episodes, haven't we, over the course of the game. And now she's officially a party member. I mean, you knew it was going to happen. Now, her first order of business as our new party member is to tell us that we should be resting up. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And that pretty much will bring us to the end of the Hermit's Hideout because... Once we've got through this particular set of scenes, we're going to be in another location. <laughs> and they're off I'll tell you what we've been making such good progress with this game we're well on our way to the end now I mean don't get me wrong there's, there's still a ways to go yet but we are well on our way
Uh oh. It's Evil Surge. It seems that Kid hasn't been truthfully informed as to the situation, this version of Kid, anyhow. Okay. Fargo swoops in to save the day. Lord of the Rings star with the eagles, only with the dragon. Or bird, rather. It's tradition, isn't it, for a pirate to have a parrot thing named Polly? I mean, this is the world of Chrono Cross, so the parrots are a little bit... Uh, more ex uh, excessive, I think I can say, compared to what we traditionally get, but it is what it is. Right, almost zonked off then, like I said, a little bit tired. <laughs> anyway, so we've got control of the party again. Now we're going to be getting new party member spam because, hey, why not? So let's start by just speaking to some of the NPCs that are scattered around. Now, first off. Well, let's just speak to everybody. Yeah, let's say we're just dropping by. <laughs> it doesn't really make any difference. Let's head down lower depths. So first off, after this cutscene, Fargo and Viper should be joining us. And that's just the beginning. Yeah, there comes the Viper himself. Yeah, here comes Fargo. So these are forced into the party. You will always get them. And here comes Marseille and Kash. Now, 
You may already have had Marcy or Karsh in the party. And you may not have Zoa. Now, I do have Zoa in the party. But effectively, whoever you don't have is who's going to join you at this point. So you will end up with them all. So Viper, Fargo, Karsh, Zoa and Marcy will all be in the party by this point now. You remember we chose Zoa when we had that choice because we could get Zoa's level 7 tech whilst he was in the party during the Viper Manor sewers dungeon that we did previously. So it just made sense. And yeah, for now, I am going to keep the party but the, that we've got set. But the point is, you've got some serious choices now that you can go through. I mean, you know, Viper's got a nice 35 strength and 20 magic, which isn't too bad at all. Uh, Riddell's got some nice magic stats there at 25, so just something to consider. Uh, we've got Kirsch as well, who's generally decent on his stats. And don't forget as well, you can make the most of their elemental affinities. We've got a whole choice of colours to select from. And some of the powerful elements that we have been collecting and trapping and what have you are only available with party members of certain element colours. So I'm not going to go through now and fiddle about with the party settings. But it is something that you can look at if you want to. And once we've gone through that little bit of the game, on the SS Invincible, we will automatically return to Death's Door. And if we move forward, we should get some more cutscene action. Yeah, so getting these six dragon relics is the next substantial part of the story. So it's what we have to do to proceed. But, as I say, there is optional stuff we're going to be doing as well, which is going to be the focus for the time being. And we can also eventually, it seems, with the right item, change our form back. Now, sadly, at this point, we're going to be saying goodbye to Harley. And because we recruited Starkey, we do get this little optional scene. Starkey won't be, as far as I know, replaced by any other party member at this point. So if you don't have Starkey here, you just won't get to see this bit. And he's quite funny.
Right, okay, so we've got control again now. But there's one more thing we can do on the boat itself. And that is recruiting another party member. I did tell you, you're going to be getting party member spam at the moment, didn't I? Right, so let's head back down to below the deck. And I think it's... No, it's not through here. I think it's the next floor down. Excuse me, please, Marcy. We're coming through if you don't mind. Okay. And into this door. This fellow would kindly uh, shimmy out of the way for us. Don't know what it is with this door. It can be a pain to try and line up and, and access. But there we go. And you might recognise this little fella. This is Pip, who has been in our party before, but this is the other Pip. And Pip joins our party again. So, why not, eh? Why not? And that pretty much means we are done here for the SS Invincible. So we're going to go ahead now and just make our way off the boat. So this is where you can start the next part of the quest if you want. The next part of the main adventure. Start taking on the various dragons and stuff. But as I say, we're going to be holding off on that for the time being. So let's just make our way off the ship first of all. Uh, there might be an easier way to do this. And that's if... Yep. Just tell this guy that we're about to leave. And that'll stick us straight back onto the boat then. Without having to fanny about going all the way down to it. Now I'm going to take you for an optional but somewhat important visit to the Viper Manor. There's going to be a number of things we can do here. Since uh, Harley has now left us, I've gone ahead and put Riddell into the party. You don't have to do that. But you know Riddell is eventually going to be one of the strongest magic casters... That we have access to so starting to build her up at this point isn't a bad idea at all and she's already got a magic stat of 25 which is pretty darn good it's only going to increase from there it's important however that before you come to the viper manor you do have novice in your party which you really should have anyway since he's such a strong character and you need him because otherwise we won't be able to get access to the manor itself but of course the soldiers think that this Norris is their Norris. And so let us through. And on the next screen, we're going to repeat the process. Hello, it's your boss. Please let us pass. Thank you very much. So as I say, there's a number of things we can do here. Uh, let's start by heading over to the left-hand side. And if we go into this room, I'm looking for the actual Norris. There he is. And if we speak to him with Novice in the party, we will get access to his level 7 tech top shot. Eh? Not too bad at all. So that's the first of three items on the agenda for this location, at least for this visit. Now we're going to head down a floor. And to be honest, we want to be on the other side, but we can still get there from here, so that's fine. Come on. And let's head through into this room here. Bit of a puzzle for us to solve, but nothing too complicated. So you can see there's a statue that's out of position here. It needs to go on the left-hand side of the wall here. However, before we do that, there's a secret button we need to push. And that's over here on this pillar. Now, we couldn't do this before because there was an NPC blocking it. But now that there isn't, we can do it. So let's push it. And now we just need to uh, reposition this statue. Hopefully into the correct location. You know, the way this sort of thing works in this game can be a little bit finicky. <sighs> Come on. There we go. Oh, we're on a roll. We're doing it. We're doing it. Nearly there. Yes. And once that's into position get access to a secret passageway leading to two chests if you didn't push the secret button by the way you could still access this place by moving the statue but the chests would be inaccessible due to a hostile poisonous gas 
That Viper's Venom is a really nice weapon for Viper, if you're using him. And another Rainbow Shell. Fantastic. So, what's that? That's the second thing that we've done now. So, there's one more to go. And for this, we're going to head back to the main, main room, main area, which means we need to head up. The main entrance. You know what I mean, don't you? And we're going to head north. This is going to give us access to yet another part of the manor that we couldn't previously get to. And that's over here. There was a robot guarding this door up until this point. So for the first time, we can now go through. And if we head to the other side here over the bridge, it's going to be another bit of a puzzle and statue moving. Nothing too complex, but can be a little bit finicky. So first of all, we're just going to get our clue. Over here, it says, respect my behind. So just bear that in mind for now. We're going to start by pushing the statues, again, a little bit awkward, into the four holes. So that's one. That's two. You'll know when you've got it because your party members will just be... Well, you'll lose control of them for a second. That's three. And then finally, last but by no means least... Yeah, perfect. And what do you know? It's another chest. Now, you might want to go rushing in to open it, which is the natural thing to do. Remember that sign, though. Respect my behind. Indeed, if you open it from here, you're going to fall through that trapdoor that would open up beneath you. Instead, open the chest from behind for a letter. This is going to start a little short side quest. Which will culminate in Sir Kash receiving his level 7 tech. So for that we're going to need to visit the Isle of the Damned. And that is going to be our next destination. So three little things that we needed to do there. Hopefully you've got them done. And when you have, we can just go ahead and leave. I've made my way over to the Isle of the Damned. And I've just fannied about a little bit with the party setup. As you can see, I've uh, switched Fargo and Kash in. Uh, Kash needs to be with us for this next bit of story, or we won't be able to proceed with it. And Fargo, well, I've brought him because he has the steel command, uh, pilfer or whatever it's called. And there's actually an item we're going to want to get from an upcoming fight that you don't want to miss out on. So this really, yeah, it should be your party set up in all honesty. Just for this next dungeon. Now, as I say, there is a, a fight coming up. It is a boss fight, but it doesn't award a level up star. So don't worry too much about minor stat gains. I mean, sure, they're nice for the fight itself to have those additional stats, but you're not going to be missing out on them uh, with a level up star. So what we're going to do is make our way into the next room, and this is where enemies are going to spawn. So let's just make sure for the purposes of the video that they will leave us alone, although it looks like they are going to. Head under the spine, just as we've done previously during our last visit to the Isle of the Damned. And from here, we're going to approach this mirror. We can't proceed until we use, where is it, the Garai Keepsake. So just use that, and then you can head into the next room. And in the next room, we're going to head all the way around. Now, make sure you've decked out your party members with... Elements and the like, heals, all of that good stuff. And to be honest, diminish is probably not a bad idea. And some earthquake traps if you have them. Let's head into the next area, the final area. And that's going to tri trigger some, well, fairly lengthy cutscenes. Look who it is. Salt and Pepper. Yeah, so now we're going to head into flashback mode. Since it seems that Salt and Pepper want to enact some justice against Kash. 
So here he is. Little mini car, with mini Dario. And mini Glenn there, just coming out. Doing their training back in the day. And here's Riddell. <laughs> Always thinking of food is Glenn. Some flowers from Riddell. I mean, yeah, I think Glenn's a little disappointed there. Yeah, I like his thinking. Take the flower to try and get some fruit later on. Wow, instant aging. I love the way that Salt and Pepper are just called the Shaker Brothers.
Okay, now don't underestimate this battle. I know that Salt and Pepper have been a little lax, you know, in the past. Not being the best at combat techniques, but they seem to have improved a little bit, in all honesty, since then. Now, what we want to make sure we do before the end of the encounter is steal a forget-me-not from Pepper. Okay, that's a really useful item. It's the first time we're going to be able to get one. So... Uh, let's just start beating Salt down. You can also steal or attempt to steal from Salt as well. Remember, when it comes to stealing, in, in this case, it's going to be with Fargo. Uh, we need to make sure that we've boosted up his elemental level first, as that actually increases the chance of getting a successful steal. Yeah, these guys hurt a lot. A heck of a lot. So I might end up having to cast Revive on Karsh. Okay, let's just go for a 2 attack. That is super annoying. Let's go for a 1 attack. And let's see if that's going to be enough. Uh, 2... Is this one? Yep, yeah, Pillage. On Pepper. Let's see if this is successful. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep, yeah, we got the Forget-Me-Not Pot. Now, is Karsh going to be able to heal here? Or is he going to be in a spot of bother? These misses are super annoying. That is terrible. I also need Karsh to throw the Earthquake tap, trap down. Since that's the fellow I equipped it onto. I can't believe just how unfortunate we're being here. These misses, we are going to need to heal all at this point. Lest Karsh get destroyed. I also want to cast Diminish. Who's got Diminish? I can't remember who I gave it to. Uh, right, let's start building up. Some levels here. And with Karsh too. He could still die, quite frankly. I need to get that Earthquake trap down, ideally. Uh, I'm going to defend with Lynx for now. Get some Staminas built up. And I can't remember. Right, let's recover all. Just because Karsh could get destroyed being at such low HP still. Right, now let's just stick to level 1s because of that low hit rate for now. Okay, crosscut is pretty mean. There was a glitch in the original version of this game where crosscut, which is only supposed to work if both are still alive, could still be used even if one of either Salt or Pepper have already been defeated, which, as I say, should not happen. So I'm not sure if that bug is present and accounted for or not. Okay, Earthquake. We didn't get the trap down, annoyingly. So Karsh is probably... In a spot of bother here. Uh, yeah, he's dead. It's annoying. Everybody else took less damage than the HP that Karsh had. But not Karsh, of course. Right, let's bring him back. Like I said, you don't want to underestimate these guys in this particular fight. Let's just keep focusing on Salt for now. Oh, in terms of HP, they've got about a thousand each, so... Uh, oh, come on, 86%, that's just shockingly bad. Right, can I put an Earthquake Trap down now? Please. If not, we can put... Oh, he hasn't got Earthquake. I thought it was him. Oh, well, my mistake. Let's just cast Diminish. Okay. Um. Why has he got Blackout? I don't even know why he's got Blackout. I'm just concerned that I was supposed to put Nostrums on him or something and never did. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Okay, right then, let's see what we've got in terms of healing here. 
stick to those level ones for now. Yeah, that's the nasty combo there. Very nasty combo, I might add. Right then. Okay, Fargo's got the trap. I'm going to put the trap down. So that when the next earthquake is cast, at least we don't have to worry about it then. I know that we've captured earthquakes in times past. But it's just about protecting us from the damage more than anything. Uh, 1.3. I've got no choice, really. Okay, so Link's got any more healing left. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, he's got recover all. Okay. Then we shall use it. Protect our party from the power of the salt and pepper. I think we need to defend. We will reduce damage by doing so. We need to get our stamina's back up. There we go. Hopefully this defense will... And the Diminish we cast will protect us. Okay, Earthquake. So good job we got that trap in place. Very good job we got that trap in place. And I do believe that Salt is now in his weakened state. The only problem is I'm pretty much out of healing at this point. So we need them to start dropping down fairly soon. If we're going to want to get through this in one piece, I feel. Oh, this isn't the combo, is it? Yeah, it is. That combo is cruel. And we're probably going to get a cross cut, I believe, again at some point. Perhaps. Maybe. Yeah, we need to heal. Just get us out of that danger zone, really. Wow. The enemy actually got a miss. Normally, it's me that misses when I attack. Well, I'll take it. Uh, right, there goes Salt. So, let's see what we've got. Carnivore. Should be pretty decent against the yellow enemy. Mind you, with diminishing play. Maybe not. Let's just hope we can get through this now. Look at this. Every, over eight. Oh, another earthquake. I did not expect that. I don't think we'd have got a trap down anyway, so. But my hit percent was over 80% every time then, and I missed like three out of four attacks. I'm sure it's bugged. I'm sure it is. Either that or the game just hates me. Double earthquake. I mean, why not? Dear, dear. Let's see if we can get another Earthquake trap down. So try and prevent some of this spam. Uh, where is it? I'm sure it's Fargo, isn't it? Yeah. Got one more Earthquake trap. Fargo also has another heal all. So we might have to put that to use. Right, can we try and stop getting these misses now? Please. Okay, not too bad. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, not a combo again. Kashi's going to die. Oh. Um, has Lynx got revive? He has, but it's been used. So we're going to be down to Fargo's mercies here. Yes. And we need, yeah, need to be careful of the fact that we've got an all yellow board at the minute. Which is definitely something we want to try and avoid. Right, one of these chaps still had a heal all, didn't they? And I can't remember if it was Karsh or was it Fargo. Well, Karsh does, so we shall make the most of that. Okay, I'm suspecting another earthquake will be coming our way 
momentarily. But fortunately, we do have that trap down to guard against it. Oh, boy. Now we're going to be doing less damage. Uh, don't miss, don't miss. Okay. Right, let's see what we've got in terms of elements here. I'm guessing... Okay. Iceberg plus one. Probably better than the physical attack with that improved defense buff that the boss has ever so kindly cast upon itself. Gur. Right, he's in his weakened state as well. And we're going to capture that earthquake. Very nice. Probably a miss. No, no. Wow, a hit with a 76 percenter. That is unusual. Yes, we did it. We did it. And we're all still standing. Good stuff. Yeah, that was just actually the minor stat gains, don't forget. Not the level up star, which there isn't one for that fight because it's optional. But we get Axiomatic. <laughs> Excuse me. Said that a bit too fast. Uh, what is Axiomatic? It is Kashi's level 7 tech. And with that, they'll return the stolen item. And off they chortle, just like that. Okay, so we've got Sprain, which was given to us from Earthquake, which is really unpleasant. So let's see if we can go ahead and remove that. I might have to... Uh, oh no, there it is. We can just use the brace item. So we did capture a couple of those earthquakes. But obviously we didn't capture them all. And at one point we got like spam, didn't we? Which is the way out? It's down here. Uh, yeah, we are actually done here though now. So we can go ahead and leave. We've got the level 7... It through here? Yep. Yeah. The level 7 tech for Kash, which is the main thing we came for. And we'll just turn off the enemy encounters. For my sanity more than anything, or it just means more editing time. We. Okay, so we're not quite done with the optional content yet, but we're getting there. We're going to head over to Marbule, and we ultimately want to go there in the Homeworld version. But before we do that, there's just one little thing we can do in this alternate version of Marbule. Now, the residents here won't interact with us if we have any humans in the party. So I recommend putting in, say for example, what I've done is I've put in Irene's and Grobic, and that will be absolutely fine. And with them in the party, we're going to speak to this blue-headed guy over here. This is the last chance we get to do this, so make sure you do if you haven't. And he will give us the Val Valencian Cloth Frame. Which is actually a pretty good one. I do like that, so I might put that on. But yeah, you'll want to do that now, because as we move on and complete the side quest in this place, I believe it is locked off from you, so yeah, just consider that before. Moving into the Homeworld version, which is exactly what we're going to do. Which means going back to the beach, Opossa Beach. You know the routine. I'll see you right back here. I've put Norris back in the party for now. We're in the home world, of course. And it's important you have Fargo in the party. We don't actually just go directly to Marbule. We need to head to the SS Zalbes once more. And we need to make our way uh, through the SS Zalbes to find the home version of Fargo. Fargo. 
So let's just head up here. And inside the main ship, we're just going to head into uh, what's his face to his ready room, his captain's quarters. And the home version of Fargo. He's a bit like the mean version of Fargo as well. He berates himself for being a sissy. Yeah, and this is how we get to Marbule. And the SS Zelbes is now the Invincible. Yes, we've got some cutscenes now, and unless I've missed anything, this should automatically lead to Fargo getting his level 7 tech. That's a pretty cool shot, that is.
I'll be honest, it didn't sound terrible to me, but perhaps I just don't have the musical ear as these sirens. Wow, that was a lot of effort for them. And it looks like that's the end of the show. That's got to be one of the lengthier cutscenes so far, hasn't it? It really has.
Yay, lengthy cutscene leads to level 7 tech. So, hopefully that will keep Fargo happy in battle. And with that done, we can finish off the journey now over to Marbule. Okay, so, we need to kill these enemies. Okay, now the thing is, we need to, we can't skip these. We need to kill them because that's what's going to spawn the next boss fight. Um, one little tip is that if you have any red elements, they are going to really come in handy here. So I'm going to go ahead and see what we've got in terms of the ready goodness. Let's go for attack. And... Volcano we can't use because we don't have a red uh, dude anywhere. Let's put Magma Burst on pretty much everybody. I think Magma Burst is going to be the way to go here. It's the strongest red element that we currently have. You know, outside of Volcano. And we're probably better off sticking these on uh, more powerful parts of the board. Yeah. And just to speed things up, I'm going to go ahead and use the little enhancements here. I suggest you do the same. That means that you'll be able to spam these elements. And we can use turbo mode as well, of course. So I'll show you the first battle and then I'll skip the rest, but I'll show you where the creatures are. Just for kicks can be a bit of a bit of a nuisance if I'm honest with you. I'll probably need to move the red elements up on some of these. Just so we can do that additional damage. Yeah, well, you get the idea, don't you guys? Yeah, there's nine in total, so... Uh, there's two over this side at the entrance. At least this is how it's been for me. There's a couple here. Well, three there. And then there's some in here as well. And you can't avoid them, as you can see. I've got the avoid on. And it doesn't work. Uh, one little tip that I've noticed is that black hole works very well. Even more so than uh, magma burst. So, a couple of uh, high-level black holes should see you through the fight without too much trouble. I believe that's the last one. And, yeah, after the last one, we get this dragon cry. Now, interestingly, that dragon is going to be our next boss fight, but it isn't in this version of Marbule. So, it's such a big, bad dragon that its roar is able to traverse dimensions, it would seem. So, yeah. And we're going to be heading back over from the homeworld, which is where we are, over to the alternate dimension. The Another World, as it's known as. So yeah, back on the uh, boat we go. I should probably save first. <laughs> 